This is Josh Friedman at the edge of Gezi Park overlooking Taksim Square in Istanbul. Today is November 1st, 2015, and for the second time in the last five months, it is election day in Turkey. On June 7th, voters dealt a blow to the ruling Justice and Development Party, the AKP, or in English, the AKP. The AKP lost the parliamentary majority that it had held for more than a decade. That, in turn, dealt a blow to President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who has been trying to transform Turkey from a parliamentary system into a presidential one. Erdogan needed the AKP to get not just a majority, but a supermajority in the parliament in order to change the constitution. That did not happen, and that is arguably why a redo election is taking place today. Shortly following the June 7th election, Erdogan began calling for a redo election, and he got his wish when party leaders failed to agree on a coalition government. In the months since June 7th, relative chaos has unfolded in Turkey. There have been suicide bombings in which ISIS is implicated and Turkish security forces are back at war with the Kurdistan Workers Party, which is a Kurdish militant group known as the PKK. Some say that the Syrianization of Turkey is taking place. In a sense, the Syrian civil war has spilled over into Turkey. On July 20, a suicide bomber killed 32 people in the town of Sarouj, which is right by the Syrian border. After the bombing, the Turkish government agreed to join the, U the US-led coalition against ISIS. Turkey then began carrying out airstrikes, but most of the bombing targeted the Kurds, not ISIS. On October 10th, two suicide bombers killed a total of 102 people in Ankara, the capital. The bombs went off at a peace rally. There have been intelligence reports that have suggested that the Turkish government had foreknowledge of the attack. Opposition leaders have accused the AKP and Erdogan of letting ISIS set off bombs in Turkey. Critics say that Erdogan and the AKP's election strategy has been to create chaos in order to reclaim nationalist voters and to paint the pro-Kurdish party as a terrorist organization. The pro-Kurdish party, the HDP, passed the 10% threshold on June 7th. That got them into the parliament and took seats away from the AKP. If they were to fall below the 10% threshold this time around, then it would greatly boost the AKP's chances of reclaiming its parliamentary majority. Polls leading up to today indicate that the results will likely be similar to those of June 7th. There is some concern of election fraud, though. Opposition leaders have raised questions about voter rolls being tampered with, and a government whistleblower has warned about a possible plan to fabricate the results. There's also concerns about voter turnout in the southeastern part of the country, which is the Kurdish region. Since the fighting has resumed between the PKK and the Turkish forces, there have been basically sieges imposed on some areas of the Kurdish region, and restrictions like that could hamper voter turnout. Uh, there's also been a crackdown on the media leading up to today. Just this week, a conglomerate that owns multiple media outlets here has been seized by the government and there were raids of newspapers and police stations and they've been taken over and, and they're essentially in the process of becoming pro-government media. The polls close at 5 p.m. today. I will provide you a report as the results unfold. I'll see you there.